Hey everybody, this is Ashley with Published with Ashley, and I am here today to talk about a niche that I have uncovered or found at least on Amazon that I thought would be really helpful, especially if you already have like a niche that's working for you. Um, just, you know, sports, uh, travel, any anything, honestly, that maybe if you have something you know is working well, this is another type of book that you can build upon. If you haven't checked out my um, playlist that goes through, it's the Q4 challenge for last year, you really should because this is something that you can build upon and add to that. I talked about you kind of pick like a niche to center around and then build out your um, brand based upon that niche. And then you add different types of books, log books. Um, this is a type of book that you can talk about. So if you're interested in that, um, and hearing more ideas that I have, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel or um, join my Facebook group or do both. <laughs> that would be great. And so if that's interesting to you, I'm just going to get into it. Good morning, those of you on YouTube. Hey, everybody. Um, I see a few people on YouTube and or good afternoon, whatever it is. So let me get right into it. I'm going to share my screen here. Add to stream. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about random fact books. And it's, there's like kind of three, it's actually three niches within random fact books. Um, there's three different, so I said there was three, um, but there's kind of three different tactics. It's not just random ta um, fact books. There's um, like fact, there's fact trivia books, fact books, um, and I'll show, I'll walk you through them. So I was looking at these and this guy right here, um, his name is, I think, O'Neill. He actually, so his is a hundred. So this is the, the code thing, random fact books or code name. <laughs> These sucked if you typed into Amazon random fact books. Um, so here, right here, he has one. I don't know why I picked 1,444 for some reason. Um, he actually has a few of these different books um, and it, they're, they're self-published and he's doing really well. He's got um, three of them, like I said, and they're all right now it's 27,000, but I think I checked it a little bit ago and it was 18,000. Um, and then, you know, he has different, he has three different ones and they're all doing really well. Like here's another one of his. Um, it's the World War II trivia book. And so see, it's you can do random facts, trivia books, um, just called fact books, those sort of things. There's like three different ways you can kind of do this and it just depends on your audience. Um, so I want to kind of walk you through these. These are doing really well. Um, it's like the random facts, I think it's harder to focus on an audience. Um, I loved random fact books as a kid. Everyone always asked me why I know just, I know useless information a lot of useless information because I used to get these 1001 fact books as a kid and I read them front to back. I love them. Um, so I have a lot of useless knowledge and there's people like me who love that sort of thing. I loved that sort of thing. So you can kind of see these are like a thousand random facts, the big book of facts. There's a lot of these that are doing really well. And especially like, I think this is great when you can focus on something specific, like look, he has a trailer. The World War II trivia book, you know, people are really fascinated by events in history. So you could just, and the, the great thing about this is if it's facts, you can like, it's, it's not something that can be copyrighted or trademarked. If they're facts, they're facts. Now you cannot copy someone's exact wording, but you know, you can use the facts. You'd have to write these and these do take a little bit of time. But like, see, he's doing really well with a lot of these, like 85,000 in the store. Here's one definitely that would be harder to do, but it's really cool for kids. It's the 80, um, Random Facts Illustrated. Um, I had, I, those are the kinds I liked as a kid. Um, let's see. So there's different ones you can focus on. Um, I'm just kind of going you through so you can see these different kinds of things. Three, I don't know why people fix some of these. 3,666 3, interesting and crazy facts. Um, 365 awesome random facts. Um, this one isn't doing as well in the store, but it's had 23. So, um, actually it was doing better last time I looked at it. Um, so, you know, it, it's still selling. So that's pretty good. Um, this would be something I would totally get. This one's at 3000, the totally awesome book of useless information. I can't tell you how much I love useless information. I am a useless information hoarder. I have so, so many, like, if you want to know something totally useless, you should ask me because I love useless information. 
Um, anyway, so there's a lot of these. So how I wanted to focus it, I wanted to show you this one. Um, this is that, this guy, he is a self-published author and he has a few books um, and he has a series. And so this is something that you can add to like, let's say, you know, um, your niche is travel. You can pick, you know, 365 things to know uh, interesting facts about Paris or 365 um, you know, whatever your number is, a thousand things to know about Europe or World War One, or he has a World War Two one, but you could just pick anything, <laughs> like any niche that you have going for you. This can be something that you can add a different type of book to. And yes, I agree. This could take some time to create, but the great thing is this one's really marketable too, especially if you pick something of high interest, uh, sports, um, you know, base baseball, there actually is quite a few. I was looking at um, baseball facts because baseball people who like baseball like facts like that's just a thing. Um, but, you know, you could pick hockey. Uh, maybe that's not as um, there's not as many on that or anything <laughs> like anything. Camping facts, nature facts, um, just anything you can think of. You could do facts about. I think big events, um, wars, though that's kind of sad and stuff, but you could pick the, the you know, unique and interesting things about wars, maybe the, the good stories or something. You could pick something that would be um, heartening to people, that it would really capture their interest in a way that people haven't. Like World War II, I think that's, there's a ton of facts but um, about World War II, but what if you pick something specific about World War II that would enlighten people or help people, um, like 1,000 facts um, good things that came from World War II. Um, and actually there is, um, there's a lot of stuff that was invented, um, which is sadly it was invented for war, um, but things that were invented that have changed the way we we are today and how we work today. So there's like a lot of really cool stuff that actually came out of World War II that were good things. So you could talk about something like that. Anyway, this is just ideas. I wanted to give you kind of some thoughts. Um, so here, there's actually a whole category on um, trivia and fun facts. So there's like the random facts, there's trivia, there's fun facts. Um, there's different ways people talk about this niche that um, are kind of surrounding by it. So that's why I said there's like three niches, um, because it's kind of, there's different ways to look at this random, a specific fact about something trivia, you know, it just depends how you want to use it. But those are all words you're going to want to use in your back end keywords. Um, here's another one, the book of unusual knowledge. I totally should get that. <laughs> I would love something like that. Um, here's, a, here's one I thought was really cool. Um, this one's kind of a Wit and wisdom of, I think it's wit and wisdom of wild women, right? So this one is affirmations that um, I guess uh, <laughs> wild women said um, various things that they had. So this is kind of a quirky type fact book. Um, it's a quote book and you have to be careful with quote books, um, but you could do something kind of along like that, like in the sense of taking something you think of, oh, these optional, these optimistic quotes. Okay, we'll change it into something that's like, um, a little bit different, like maybe more sarcastic, right? That's kind of what I think of this as a sarcastic, um, optimism affirmation book. Um, here's one, the ultimate bathroom reader. <laughs> okay. So, um, see here's some more he's done. Bill O'Neill, um, the interesting stories for curious kids. So he's taken all this love of researching and facts and created just a ton of different books around that. And you could completely do that too. Um, there's the useless fact ones, a thousand one places to see before you die. Um, just a lot of different like, oh, here's I thought a really good one. Interesting facts for smart kids, right? So there's fact books that you're just focusing on kids. And this might be really cute, but man, you can make a better cover than that. I think you could do someone could do a much better cover than that. It's really cute. But um, here's one about the ultimate Green Bay Packers trivia book. I would stay away from um, he may have a license. I don't know. But I would stay away from anything uh, trademarked or something like that. I would pick, you could pick, you know, a thousand one football facts. Um, but I know I could see why this would be something that would sell because um, people are crazy about the Green Bay Packers. Um, but you could pick something else that just like football in general. Um, let's see. These people might have uh, learn a lot while you sit on the pot. There you go. <laughs> there's a there's a funny fact book for uh, the bathroom. Um, but those things like that sell. 
Okay, let's see. American Fact Books. Um, see Bill O'Neill again. He has a ton of books. He's really kind of cornered this market and not in a bad way. There's so many ways. The Great Book of Ireland, right? Who? I mean, this is probably selling because of St. Patrick's Day, but that's a great thing. Like you could, okay, so what's St. Patrick's Day might be a hard one to find um, right now, but uh, what's the next one? Something like the 4th of July? That might be one um, definitely on the, the U.S. side, the thousand one facts about the 4th of July that you didn't know. That'd actually be a really good one. Um, but something like that, you can do all sorts of things. Okay, let me look at my comments real quick. And then I've got some suggestions because I went through um, – Publisher Rocket and saw some opportunities that maybe you guys want to focus on. Okay, so the mornings, hello. Uh, how do you get content? Okay, the internet, Google, um, encyclopedias. Uh, they have an Encyclopedia Mechanica. Like, just remember, it's facts. So facts cannot be copywritten, but the actual words are copywritten. So if you're, um, you just have to do some research. Honestly, Google, you can get to any library in the world probably through Google. Um, so just pick something, once you have your topic, you just find reputable sources for your facts, right? You have to use something um, like encyclopedias are fantastic sources, um, published books by authors, um, even stuff in the public domain that would be considered um, fact type. You just, just have to look up facts. So where do you get the content? It's, it's completely free to be able to get the content um, on Google. Go to your library. If you have a library nearby, um, check out, you know, fact books. One of my favorite places to get fact facts are from kids books <laughs> because kid books, they always have really fun, interesting facts. So you can go to your local library and start collecting facts. I would literally probably just go to the library, get a bunch of books off the shelf and start writing down facts in my own words. So I would literally... Well, maybe I'd type it, but I'd probably handwrite it because that's how, how I am. I would just get out, look, and read and say, okay, that's an interesting fact. That's an interesting fact. Um, and as long as the facts, uh, you know, you're using your own words to write the facts in, that's fine. Now, stuff like, um, you know, World War II started on this date, that's that's not like a copywritten ex ex phrase, right? There's not too many ways to say that, but you'd have to... The rest of it would have to be your own word. Like, does that make sense? It has to, it has to be your own words, but the facts are the facts. If something started on a certain day, that's not like a copywritten type thing. Um, another place to get facts, okay? You, if it's if you're on the inventions type thing, you could look up at the U.S. Patents Office. Um, has all of that's public domain information. So the U.S. Patents Office, depending on what you're looking for, you know, if you're looking for 101 bathroom facts. OK, so you could go on to the U.S. Patent Office and pull off um, facts about patents on bathrooms and um, things that clean toilets. I don't know. There's a ton of information on the Patent Office. There's so many places to get facts. Um, you just have to look. Um, anyone with a library card in the New York City or anyone can get a library card from New York City Public Library for $50. They mail you a card and you can check on books online to read on your device. There you go. That might be a lifelong thing for $50. You can get that. Um, that's a, maybe something you want to invest in not. It just depends. Um, if you're just doing these books to try, like I said, uh, you can get information. Just find an encyclopedia online. I know the world, what was it? World Britannica Cyclopedia. It was online a while ago. <laughs> and <laughs> so you could get that, you know, that has tons of facts. It just has to be a reputable source. That's really what you're looking for. Um, okay, let's see. Next thing I wanted to show you guys some ideas. Okay, so rant. So the three kind of ones I got were random fact books, trivia books and fact books. So random fact books, uh, random, here's kind of an opportunity random fact book for teens. Okay, it has, um, it has not a huge amount of searchers, a reasonable amount of searchers, but it has a competition score of only 20. So that means that if you do a good job of keywording it and SEOing it, then you could end up on the first page. That's kind of what these competitive scores mean. Um, so, and, you know, people are looking for it and there aren't, it says that there's 700 competitors, but when I looked, there really wasn't quite exactly 
random fact book for teens. They had just used those words in their back end keywords. So uh, if you had your title that specifically, then you would rank higher in SEO. Um, and of course, once you got sales, you'd rank higher. So you've got to sell it too. Um, so other things, you know, this random fact book for kids, um, that's not too bad at 52. Um, it has a decent amount of searches. And so, uh, okay. But more, I got more ideas from this trivia books. There are a ton of different types of things that you could probably go for. Let's look for one that I saw. Um, trivia book for seniors. There you go. Trivia books for seniors is a pretty decent one. It has 300 searches per month and it's got a competitive score of 33. So it's, Definitely something people are searching for. And there's not a lot of people actually who have trivia books for seniors. Um, trivia books for teens. And that's actually a really good one. Look, um, it has 1,890 searches and a competitive score of 20. So you'd have to obviously find information that teens would be interested in, but there's some stuff. Um, let's see. And just some of these um, trivia book for Harry Potter. Like I said, I would stay away from anything um, trademarked. There's probably some leeway through all that, but I just wouldn't even want to deal with anything that I could be accountable for legally. So I would just stay away from anything that's trademarked. Harry Potter, Barbie, Disney, all of it. Just avoid it all. Um, trivia for I Love Lucy. Again, I would avoid things like that. Um, oh, here was one. I thought this one trivia book, large print, 900 searches per month and 20, um, of the competition score. So there, remember the seniors one. So you could have, um, trivia book for seniors, large print, right? Obviously that's definitely a, a match. <laughs> seniors like the larger print books. So there's something that would definitely, um, be of use. So other things, golf, soccer, um, trivia, theater book, um, there is a lot of different stuff. It maybe doesn't have a huge amount of searches, but if you're like the only person with that back book, um, you know, it's going to sell. Um, bathroom trivia book. <laughs> this one actually has quite a few, uh, a high competition, which I guess makes sense because it's kind of funny, right? Um, football, Jeopardy. I would avoid the word Jeopardy, Beatles. Let's see. Royal trivia book. I don't know about that. Maybe. Not a lot of people are searching for it, apparently. Um, trivia book for adults 2021. That has actually a decent amount of searches. So you could do trivia books for adults 2022, right? Um, trivia books for kids 9 to 12. Hmm. Large print. That's another one. So large print. Um, what was the one I found? I don't remember. Anyway. Uh Okay, so those were kind of some ideas. This one, trivia book for kids 8 to 12. Okay, there's a decent amount of searches for it. Um, there's a competitive score of 33. Okay, fact books. All right, fact books, which are slightly, it's kind of all the same keywords, but I think people think of them slightly different, trivia and facts. Um, I like thinking facts because I'm kind of a more analytical person, but I understand a lot of people like it's it's a it's not different, but it, the mentality is different. I like fact books, whereas I think other people like trivia books. Um, so that those are two different niches in the sense of definitely on the fact books, you could go more sciencey, STEM, technology, um, and maybe the trivia. It's it's more the fun stuff like sports and things like that. Um, so these had did fact books have anything interesting? Have Facebook ads? I'm not sure why Facebook got pulled up here. Um, but if I go back down, uh, let's see, what was one? Fact book sports. That's not too bad. People looking for that. Fact books kids. Um, not too bad. Uh, let's see, what was another? Fact books here again. Fact book for kids ages 8 to 12. That is a curious age. Honestly, um, 8 to 12, I have, I have an 8-year-old. Oh, I've had the whole gamut of them all. But, um, yeah, that's a really curious age. So I can see why parents want because that age they can read all by themselves they're interested in things they have um interests so you can definitely focus on that kids fact books for space that would totally be me i love stuff about space um i like to learn <laughs> can you tell um okay so those were kind of some of the things i saw that i thought were opportunities um let me remove that 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Copyright. Yeah, I kind of explained copyright, Muhammad, that it's copyright is the wording, right? You cannot repeat words. But if it's just the Revolutionary War started on X date, that's not really copyrightable because it's just a fact. Now, any wording, like um, specialized wording, other words, right? You can't just copy things out of books. You have to write it in your own words. But if it's a fact, it's a fact. You know, like uh, there are hammerhead sharks in the world, right? That's a fact. It's not like you could, unless I pulled that sentence from somebody else, it's it's not really copyright. And if you if you're doing facts, a lot of times your words are going to be similar, but it's going to be taken as a whole. Like, right, if you're writing your own sentences, your own word, you're going to have your own word style. Um, these can be paperbacks or Kindle. That's the great thing about this. Fact books can be paperback or Kindle. Um, so you have two options to sell it. Um, and that's kind of nice. So that's, it's a lower content book in the sense that you're not writing a whole book. You're just researching a bunch of facts and then you could literally research them all kind of, and, you know, just put them into an Excel sheet and then you put them into words on paper. Um, but you could just keep track of them on Excel, just writing your facts out or however you wanted to do it. You could type it out and it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is definitely something that, um, you can do Kindle or paperback. Let's see, what else do I got? Hello, those in Facebook land, um, please. Low competition, high search books for upload. So I gave you some of the ones that I thought, um, I thought one of the best ones was either targeting teens or targeting that eight to 12 year old, which is kind of teens, tweens, right? Um, so random fact books for teens. It looks like there's some searches and there's a low competitive score and a few people are earning some money. You know, these average monthly earnings, I take this with a grain of salt because it says it's supposed to be those who rank highly on the page. This is the average they earn. Um, but if you open up the tab, it's kind of random. So I just kind of look at these as kind of a, I don't know. I just kind of take it with a grain of salt in the sense I don't take this as exact. It's an average for those who are ending up on the first page. Um, and that's about all I can take from it. Um, but yeah. So those are type of things you can do. Oh, you can't see me looking. <laughs> I was looking on the screen. You can't see me doing it. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the ones I thought might be. There's anything, though. Um, like I said, if you are into travel books, uh, you could do one on um, Paris or Italy. Like think tourist spots that people would go. I've always said this, like if people are willing to spend money to go do something uh, like a trip to Paris, a trip to Peru, a trip somewhere touristy spot if you're willing to spend some money on it they're willing to buy a book so they can have some facts about the place or um, a low content book to um, write their journal in so that's like things you can book together so you could do um, you know thousand and one facts about Paris um, and you can also sell with that like at the back of that book uh, or the back of the other you can say you know hey I also have a travel journal for Paris you know, check out that or on the fact in the travel journal, you can say, hey, I have a 1001 facts about Paris. Would you be interested in that? So you can cross promote your products if you're aimed at a certain target. And that way, um, people who are doing something or spending money on something uh, like anything they're interested in, whether it's sports, travel, it doesn't really matter. They have multiple interests in that particular niche. So you know, you could pair that with a word search um, book. Like there's lots of things they would be interested in if they're interested in like, let's say a soccer random fact book and a soccer word search book and a soccer, um, you know, I don't know, photo book, journal, something, right? You can do a lot of things with one specific niche and then create multiple books that you could cross promote to that specific audience. Oh, um, in February, March, which books sell more? Um, February, March, you start going towards the spring activities. So we have some books like Easter, um, springtime stuff. So spring coloring books, uh, you know, cute little fluffy bunny type stuff, um, baby animals, uh, lots of different stuff. And it's that whole spring market. Um, and different 
Easter, all sorts of different things. If you're looking to actually focus on a specific type thing, um, outdoorsy stuff starts to sell in March um, because people are prepping to go somewhere for the summer. Um, so anything, you know, hiking or outdoors or um, trips, um, yeah, like travel, like books, that sort of stuff, anything on that stuff starts to sell in March because people are planning those activities for a month or two away, right? So those sort of things. Um, what books, word search books sell? <laughs> All sorts of word search books sell because people really like word search and they really like things about their own niche. Um, I have a few word search that I have done on a specific niche and they sell pretty well. Um, let's see. I, it's, it's, it's not about do which word search books sell the best. It's can you find a niche that is interested in word search? Um, so does your target market like word search? Um, probably a lot of target markets do like word search. So you've just got to kind of decide what you want on. Can you just do thousand and one word search and not without some advertising because it's got to be focused down a little bit more. Um, you know, uh, word search for soccer players, um, people who like soccer, um, word search for football, word search STEM, like STEM word search. Um, I saw someone doing sight words, word search, which I think is a great idea. Um, there's lots of different things. You've just got to focus on a specific niche. I know everyone's like, what sells the best? Well, you have to dig in a little bit deeper and what your market you want to focus at and sell to them. Um, and that can be almost anything. Um, niche, like, oh, niche. At, so niche and niche. That's kind of an Americanism. We sell it. We say it niche and niche or actually probably other countries too. I know most people call it niche, <laughs> but I think I also call it niche occasionally. <laughs> Sorry. They're the same thing. I don't mean to be confusing. Niche and niche are the same thing. I just, I think it's niche, but yeah, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Anyone else have questions? Uh, it's kind of the one I have for today. I thought this is this is definitely takes more time, but that guy, Scott O'Neill, he started in 2017, which wasn't that long ago. And he's got like, I think, I don't know, I had to, I would have to look, but I just know flipping through, I saw that he has like 10 books at least, at least. And that was just a quick glossary look of things that are selling well. And so, you know, he it, maybe it took him, let's see, three, four years to create those 10 books, or maybe he probably has a few more, but they're all selling really well. And so he's done a really good job of cornering his little world of the market of random facts and um, fact books. But he's a uh, independent publisher. I checked that and his books are independently published. So that means you can do it too. Um, you just got to corner your end of the market, right? And like he has those series books. Um, and normally you can't do series with low content books, but something like this, you could do a series for because his is, you know, 1001 or whatever number he had, um, back book series one, uh, book one, book two, book three, he had a three series and that's okay for a series because in the sense of a book, it makes sense. Um, low content books often don't lend themselves to a series because it doesn't make sense. But that kind of book does because it has um, words and substance. So he's saying, here's the first book and the second book doesn't have any of the repeat facts and the third book doesn't have any of the repeat facts. So it makes sense. It's like a progression. Um, and that makes sense for kind of a series. Um, so he can market all of his books in the series, which is really great. Cause if I found a, I, like I said, I love random fact books. If I found someone who comes up and researches really fun and unique facts, I would buy the second one and the third one, because like I said, I love random facts. And if someone does it well, I'm totally interested in buying more of their books. And I think it's, this makes those books take more time. They do, it, it lends itself to anyone can do it. Um, you just have to be able to do the research and write your own facts um, in your own words and then, um, get them out there. And it, it shouldn't take, I mean, think of it. If, even if you had to do, let's say you did a thousand facts, even if you just collected like, you know, 10, 20 facts a day and you just kind of 
rolled along. This could be something you could, you know, create over time. Just collect a few facts, collect a few facts every day. And then, you know, by the end of a month, you would have, you know, your book. Uh, so, you know, it does take some time, but it's not like it has, you don't have to sit down for six days straight and try and do this. You could just take it off a little bit at a time, you know, pick up 10 facts here, pick up 10 facts there, and eventually just compile it into a book that you're going to publish. Anyway, okay, let's see if there's any more questions. Oh, let's see. So, yeah, word searches, like I said, you just have to do some research and to decide, and it's not even research, you just have to decide what, I'm a big believer in pick a subject like travel, like um, hiking, like um, women, moms, right? Pick a, a subject, moms. So you could do word searches for moms. You could do random facts for moms. You could, you just pick a subject and create books around that subject so that you can cross promote your books to that subject. Because yes, it's good to have all these random books all over the place, but why do that when you can pick something you and you're interested in, whether it's football, soccer, stuff for moms, um, stuff for Christian women, stuff for teen boys. I don't care. Just pick something that you're interested in. And then you create books around that audience. And then that way, like I said, you can cross promote to your audience. So this, this trivia thing is something you can add to that. So if your target market is, you know, moms, well, what kind of random facts would moms like? Um, you know, I don't know. I have to think about it, but that's something you can add to your target market. So that's why I think this random facts, trivia, all that sort of thing lends itself to putting it into any target market you're looking at. Um, that's just how I, I do things. I used to just kind of throw stuff out there here, or there, and do everything everywhere. But I found it was kind of a waste of my effort when instead I found that if I picked a subject I enjoyed, something I'm interested in, and then just created books around that industry, like a few things happened. One, I could cross promote my books within my books. I could say, hey, here's some more of my other titles. You know, do you enjoy um, the, you know, stuff for moms? Here's some of my other titles and I'll get sales from that. And then also in kind of focusing on a niche or something like that, and then adding extra books in, I, I understand my audience more. I understand who to focus on. Um, when I do my Pinterest marketing, um, I can put in all the different books I've created for that in my Pinterest marketing because I'm focused on something that that audience would like. Um, so it just if you just pick some sort of topic, <laughs> whether it's kids whether it's, um, like I said, <clears throat> moms, whether it's travel, it doesn't really matter. Just pick something and then you can create books around that. It just, it, it helps focus your efforts and you end up, more of your books end up starting to sell um, because you understand the audience better. You can sell to an audience who's already bought your books. Um, there's just focus. I know you, everyone wants to try everything, but I really believe that you should focus on an audience and then add different books for that audience. And I think that's really the way to focus your efforts because you're going to start, instead of having one out of a hundred books do well, you're going to start having, um, you know, one out of 50 do well. And then you're going to start having one out of 10 do well. Now I've kind of focused down on, um, I have two big audiences I focus on. Now it's pretty much one out of three books or maybe even one out of two books for me. So one won't and one will, um, because I understand my audience <clears throat> and I'm focused. And so I've just found a lot more success in doing that. And then I can spend more time on the books I create. I don't have to make a hundred books. I can just make, you know, two books and one will probably do well and one won't, but that's okay. Cause one did. Um, so that's kind of why I focus on this. And this does take time. It takes some discipline because your first probably, you know, 10, 20 books may not do well for your audience, but eventually as you understand it more, um, you focus more, you have more advertising, maybe through Pinterest that's free or, um, even Amazon advertising, however you want to do it, you're just going to find more success in those niches. 
All right. Sorry. So that's kind of different, but that's how I do my stuff. Um, I used to do that whole shotgun approach and do things all over the place, but it, I, it was fun, <laughs> but it wasn't particularly effective for me. <clears throat> sorry. I <clears throat> really have, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Sorry. Um, how do you feel the seven slots for keywords, no content books, like composition notebooks? Um, I have a keyword video. So if you want to go look at that on YouTube, I have a video about that, but I generally, I think I have two or three where I kind of go through and say, here's how I do my seven keyword boxes. I have kind of, I want to call them s s categories or titles. So like the first one I say, okay, the first, I, the first two I remember off the top of my head. So the first two boxes or something are usually about the content or the cover. So if it's a pretty notebook and it's pink, I'll put pretty and pink. And if there's a cat on it, I'll put cat, um, right? Pretty pink cat with hearts. I wouldn't put the word with, but I would try and describe the cover in words that are descriptive. Like if I was looking for a pink notebook, I might as a customer type in pink notebook, right? Um, so I want to describe what's on the front or the cover or the colors, um, those sorts of words. And then the other keyword boxes, I use like synonyms. I can't remember off the top of my head. That's why I have it written down as kind of a formula. So try and find that video. It's called, you know, how I do my keyword boxes or, or keywords. Just look through my videos. You'll find it. It's probably not too hard to type that in. Um, but hopefully that will help you. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else have questions? I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, my throat is, yeah, <laughs> too much talking or something. Anyone else have questions? I'm so glad to have you guys on live. I love to answer questions. So please, hopefully I won't go on too much tangents, but I, I tend to. <laughs> um, but I think all of it's really valuable. Um, and like I said, the, I think the best thing you can do for yourself is pick a category and niche you enjoy and then create different types of books around that. I really go into that in that um, Q4 challenge that I have a playlist for, um, but it's really that idea of pick something to center yourself around and then do books that can feed into that so that you're able to cross promote yourself. You're able to do A plus content marketing uh, effectively. You're, you're, you just, you get better if you focus. And I know people don't want to, I think everyone's worry is if they pick something and what if it doesn't sell? Okay. How about this? Pick two niches you enjoy and focus on two. And then if one doesn't do well, and one does, focus on the one that does well. If you're really worried about all that, I think, you know, you can kind of, I don't know, spread out your worry. <laughs> you can you can not be so stressed about it. Um, and you can try and do, you know, maybe just work on two niches. But don't go too farther out from that. Start seeing what does well. And then as you find out, you know, okay, this niche does well. For, like I guess a two that I focus on because to do well for me. And then the other didn't. So I kind of went, oh, I'm going to focus on these two. And then as I focused on those two, I said, okay, now I can do some Pinterest marketing because I know these, these sell for me and I can do different things to um, help promote. I can do A plus marketing because you don't want to necessarily do A plus marketing on everything, um, but you want to do it on things that are worth your time. So you've really got to balance that idea of what is worth my time and what isn't. Trying everything isn't worth your time. Um, it's just scattering your time. If you're like me who has to, has so many, I have so many things going on. I have to focus. And so everyone asks, do I have two or three Pinterest accounts? I actually have two Pinterest business accounts, but mo one of them really has most of my stuff on it because I don't have the time to have like 10 Pinterest accounts. I don't have the time to have all these things. So I've kind of narrowed down and focused on two, um, I want to call them like niches, like, you know, camping, outdoors or, or stuff like that. Like if sports is your thing or kids ages, you know, um, I don't know, three to probably eight is probably a decent niche because that it's kind of a, a certain educational learning style. Um, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. If you just focus on something like that and you can create books around that, you just have a lot more opportunities to market it, a lot more opportunities to um, make your customers see it. Okay. Sorry. That's a lot. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Lucy, for putting out the, the video on keywords. 
Um, I don't know if it came through on the comments. I can't see it, but you guys in YouTube probably can. Um, oh, it's called Low Content key Book Keyword Strategy for Amazon. There you go. It is a good video because I think what I like about it, and it took me a while to get to this strategy of just saying, okay, here's the keyword box. These are the types of things I'm going to put in there. It really, it just helped me focus and and um, be a little bit more systematic with filling out those keyword boxes rather than staring at them and saying, oh my gosh, what should I put in these keyword boxes, right? <laughs> I said, okay, I, I know what I should put in these keyword boxes. What are those words? So it kind of, it, it solves that problem. And I think it helps just give you a, some formula to start with. Um, Pinterest marketing and books uh, how does it sell? I have a whole face, uh, whoever's on the Facebook, go and check my YouTube channel out. I've got a whole thing on marketing and Pinterest marketing. So it, there's a lot to Pinterest marketing. So please just watch those videos because, um, the idea with Pinterest yet again is to pick an audience to aim stuff at. So if it's people who like the outdoors, if it's moms, if it's camping, if it's whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, people who have like doors is a pretty decent topic because you can do a lot with that. Um, then, you know, you can fill out your Pinterest board with your products and other things that are of interest to that market and you can market your stuff for free. Um, it does work. I, I, um, I didn't do as much this Christmas as I did last Christmas and Last Christmas, I really saw those pins get clicked on and you can see that they go through to the product um, and you can't see if they've purchased it necessarily, um, but you can see that they've gone through and gotten to the product. So um, the product page on Amazon. So that's really cool because I know that they've gotten there and have seen the product on Amazon. And <clears throat> I think it really did reflect in my sales. Um, okay. Any other questions? Anyone else have anything? If not, this is, it's already 1240. Uh, so I probably should go because I know this is already a long video. Um, but thank you all for being here. And do check out the rest of my videos. Those of you who are on Facebook and are asking about a lot of stuff, I do have a lot of information out there. So um, check out my YouTube channel. Um, I, I'm really big on helping people learn different and unique strategies. I know I focus on um, low content books a little bit differently than most people. Uh, I have kind of, oh, I did the shotgun approach. <laughs> I tried everything and it wasn't, it wasn't particularly effective. So I really wanted to give you guys strategies that, um, yes, you want to try things in the beginning to decide what feels right for you. Um, so definitely do that, but don't go too far that you're spreading yourself too thin that you can't get something accomplished. Uh, I think it's kind of better to pick like one or two categories, see what starts to work for you. And then as you know, if nothing works, then you can kind of move on to something else, but you don't want to spread yourself too thin because then nothing will work. It just, you won't, you won't get anywhere, um, with that. Um, now there's definitely people who are really focused on um, searching out, doing the research, finding something that's low uh, competition and all that and doing a book here and a book there and a book here and a book there. But I think eventually those holes are going to close. And instead you should do something kind of like what Scott O'Neill did, which is he picked trivia books. That's like apparently his thing. He likes facts and trivia and random facts. I love that sort of thing. I probably should have done it, but he's kind of focused on that. And you can see he even had ads with videos. Um, he had all sorts of different things that um, kind of focused on his audience. And he's doing really well now. It took him two or three years to get to the point where he has like 10 books that are selling, you know, 100,000 and under. But heck, that's really awesome. Um, so, you know, you you can do it too. You've just got to pick something to focus on rather than something to focus on you enjoy. If you don't like random book books, don't do this. Um, but this can be something you can add to your book, uh, to your niche. You don't have to do a ton of them. You could just add one to this. Anyway, that's what I have. Sorry. <laughs> Any problem to pin an Amazon link? No, you can put an Amazon link in Pinterest. You just can't, and I'm not positive on this, but you, I don't think you can put an affiliate link on Pinterest. So you can't use your affiliate account if you have an affiliate account on Pinterest, um, but you can just put an Amazon product linked. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. You can do that. No problem. All right. 
I will see you all in the next video. Ooh, I'm going to go over descriptions. Hopefully next Monday, I think I'm going to have it out. Um, it's a video talking about descriptions and how to, I'm going to talk about the art of selling, right? How do you get a consumer to buy? So we're going to kind of go through the mentality of how people think to purchase something. And then I'm going to show you how to put a description in like how I like formulas for things, right? I like to say, okay, this is what I want to do here. This is what I want to do here. And this is what I want to do here. And that way I don't have to think about everything. I can just kind of think about, okay, here's this I've got to fill out and this I've got to fill out. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about in my Monday video. And then I will be back live on Wednesday. So I will see you all then. All right. Thanks. Bye.